After Sunday in the year 1722, a Dutch explorer, Jacob Rogovin, is 2,300 miles off the coast of Chile, leading a fleet of three ships on an expedition to establish a western trade route to the Spice Islands. In the early afternoon, he is alerted by his crew that they have spotted a small island and that there is smoke rising from it in several places, suggesting that it is inhabited. When they reach the shore, they are surprised by the appearance of some of the natives. When Jacob and his crew discovered Easter Island in 1722, accounts were written down that not only did they stumble across normal Polynesian looking people, but as well people of giant proportions who were light skinned, had red hair and even blonde hair. Jacob records the following statement in the ship's log we noticed certain remarkable tall stone figures. These stone figures caused us to be filled with wonder, for we could not understand how it was possible to erect them. Some of these statues were a good 30 feet in height and broad in proportion. It seemed to us that God must have created these statues. They are not man-made. 300 years later, Jacob's questions concerning the strange appearance of the natives as well as the origins and purpose of the gigantic stone statues known as Moai, have yet to be answered. But what do the statues of Easter Island represent, and when did they come into existence? Is it really plausible that a seafaring civilization stumbled upon the island and settled here, bearing in mind the type of ships they would have sailed in to reach the land, how long it would take, and ultimately, would Easter Island even have been possible to reach in antiquity? There are stubborn question with no logical conclusion. We drive a theory that a primitive people created these masterpieces with no real evidence or proof they even attempted such feats of engineering brilliance, let alone accomplish this. There must be answers though, and perhaps the answers lie in the various other stone quarries around the planet that were seemingly abandoned just as it was at Easter Island. This doesn't tell the story of who done this or why, but what it does tell us is that all around the world, all at the same time in history, gigantic stone monuments were stopped during the quarrying process. This signifies the cataclysm. It tells us that there was an event that reset everything and that it affected the entire planet. Easter Island never escaped the deluge, and the topple moai we see even to this day are signs that a wall of water hit the island and knocked some over. The ground was softened to mud at a lot of the sites, and this also led to sinking of the giant statues. What we are looking at on this island are ancient figures that represent a greater period in history. Of course, we often refer the golden period, well, doesn't it make sense that this island was not always as remote as it is today? The waters that the flood brought about probably cut the island off from the world as opposed to ancient navigators setting out to find it. And why settle on an island? And why was there no record of the island having existed before Jacob, the Dutch navigator, accidentally found it? It does seem entirely possible that Easter Island was not always cut off from everything else. This place is, after all, the most remote part of our planet. Almost five hours on a plane from Chile today, it would seem the inhabitants survived the flood on this far and distant land. It is just mind-boggling. Just how the Moai were transported and positioned in the island can be found in the legends told by the native people. Legends that suggest a type of energy known as mana was used to literally levitate the giant sculptures into place. According to oral tradition and the legends, the king was given the gift of manna from the great creator god, Make Make. Legend holds that the king commanded that these great stone statues walk. According to the Easter Island myth, this power came out of the eyes of the statues and was this mystical power. It's like it was creating some kind of force field of energy that surrounded the island and protected it. So you have to wonder if there's something real here and was it some kind of extraterrestrial technology? Of all the many mysteries of Easter Island, perhaps the most puzzling involves not only the construction of the Moai, but their position on the island. 
880 of the 887 Moai face inland, but on the west edge of the island, seven of the Moai are positioned on a platform known as Ahu Akivi and face outwardly towards the sea. Moais face in, it's believed, because they're protecting the village that they oversee. Ahu Akivi is the one exception. The Moais there look out to sea. Not only that, they're identical. The seven are perhaps looking out to something in the sea, signaling something of awesome importance, and this led the History Channel to send two expert researchers to the first landmass found that perhaps the statues are signaling. 2,300 miles from Easter Island on the Marquesas Islands, and strangely, this island have a story of seven brothers that were exiled to Easter Island by their father, the king. Are the seven statues facing the direction of the Marquesas Islands, an actual depiction of the seven brothers longing for their passage home? Does the story and these statues connect the two lands? It is astonishing to think this could be the case. Of course, this area of the world is mysterious and completely anomalous, but isn't everything on this planet just as weird? These places are strange to us because they are a mystery. But the only mystery to us is just how the hell were we led on this path of forgetfulness as a people for so long. It is strange because it does not fit a historical narrative. History all over our earth has been plundered and burned and even changed in the favor of the prevailing culture in many cases. It is lost to us in so many ways, but at sites like Easter Island, it has been preserved and it is up to us today to try to better understand not just local history of these places and how they came to be, but also link them in with the world history, how it arose and what happened to it. It does seem that we are destined to not start at the beginning of the history of these places, but at the end and work our way back bit by bit as we try to uncover the truth surrounding our civilization. What do you guys think of this anyway? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.